Hello everyone, in this video we'll cover the static keyword in Java and some of the concepts tied to it. We have already used this keyword in previous videos when we introduced the main method. As we discussed, a valid main method needs to be a static. But what does that keyword actually mean? In Java, the variables and the methods that we define inside of a class can belong to either the class itself or the blueprint itself or to the objects or instances. The static keyword allows us to tell the compiler exactly that. So variables and methods that don't have the static keyword are said to belong to the instances, whereas variables and methods that have the static keyword are said to belong to the class to our blueprint. I agree, it can sound a bit confusing. So what does this actually mean? Let's take a look again at our airplane example from our classes and objects video. If you recall, in that example, we have a non-static Boolean field that we called landed. As this is a non-static field, it means that every instance or every object that we create will have its own landed variable associated with it. So if I create three airplane objects, each of them will have a separate landed variable. They're independent from each other. This is the same as we saw in the debugging step in our classes and objects video. Now let's assume that we added the keyword static to our landed variable. By adding that keyword, we are telling the compiler that the variable belongs to the blueprint itself. This means that there is a single landed variable. It belongs to the class itself. It doesn't matter how many airplane objects we create. So this also means that the landed variables that were created for each object no longer exist. So let's give this a try in IntelliJ. For this video, I have a starter project with our airplane class and also a main class with an empty main method. In our airplane class, let's change our landed field and mark it as static. The first thing that you're going to notice is that IntelliJ will change the font of the landed variable to help us differentiate our static fields from the non-static ones. Now, in our main method, let's create three airplanes, so three airplane objects, and assign them to variables plane1, plane2, and plane3. Let's also call uh, the land method on our first airplane, so plane1.land. And let's also print the result of the has landed method for our three airplanes. So plane1, plane2, and plane3. Cool. So what I want us to do now is I want to add a breakpoint in the last line of code, and I want to run the code in debug mode. Excellent. So there are two things that I want us to see here. First, if you inspect the three airplane objects in our debugger, you're going to see that none of them have a landed variable. This is expected because we mark the variable as a static. So now our objects don't get that landed variable. The second thing is that we can inspect the value of that static variable from a couple of places in IntelliJ. One option is to open the airplane class and hover over the landed name. So if I hover over the landed variable, IntelliJ is going to show us the value of that variable. Another option is to click the plus icon on the variables tab and type airplane, the name of our class, dot landed, which is the name of the static variable. As you can see, the value is true. This is because we called the land method in one of our airplanes. In IntelliJ, you can control click on the method and it's going to take you to, to the code. And what this method is doing is, is changing the value of that landed variable, which is a static at the moment, and setting it to true. Now, let's resume the execution of our code and see what the three values are that got printed out. So in our case, it's true for the three airplanes as we would expect. Now, let's remove the static keyword and run the code again in debug mode. In this case, when we inspect the objects, each object has a separate landed variable, same as we saw in the classes and objects example. And you can see that the only airplane that has the landed flag set to true is plane one. Okay, so we saw an example of a static versus non-static variables. But what about methods? 
How can methods belong to an instance or to a class? The main way to think about this difference is about the variables that a method has access to, or in other terms, what is called the scope of the method. Let's take a look at our land method for a second. As it is non-static, it means that each airplane object that we create will have its own version of the method. And yes, you're right, the code of all these methods is exactly the same. However, the data that each method sees is different. Let's recap our land method. It's a very simple method. All it does is it, change, it changes the landed variable to true. And this is where the difference between each of the methods lies. The landed variable that the land method of the first airplane will change is the landed variable that belongs to that object, not the ones from airplanes true or airplane three. Now, what happens if we have a static method? We're telling the compiler that the method belongs to the class itself. So there is only a single version of that method, no matter how many airplane objects we create. Of course, this means that a static method cannot access non-static fields because that static method is not associated with any object, so it wouldn't know what fields to change. So let's see this in IntelliJ. In our airplane class, let's mark our land method as a static. The first thing that you're gonna see is that IntelliJ shows us that there is an error, indicated that, indicating that we're trying to access a non-static variable landed from a static method. As I mentioned before, you cannot access non-static variables from static methods. So for the purpose of this example, let's remove this line of code and leave the method empty. Now, if we go to the main method, you will see that the plain one.land call, it works. But IntelliJ is showing us a compilation warning. You can see this because it's highlighting the line. And if I hover over it, it's telling us that we're trying to access the static method land using an instance reference. So we're doing plain one.land. Remember that our method now belongs to the class, not to a specific object. As we marked our method static, we don't need an airplane object to call that method. We can call it using the name of the class directly. So instead of plane one, I can use airplane.land. Okay, let's revert back those changes and leave our method as it was. Now, this topic lends itself for us to introduce the concept of the this reference in Java. If we go back to the example of our non-static methods, do you recall we mentioned that each instance of our airplane class would have its own version of the method? In non-static methods, Java provides to us a variable or reference called this. That points to the object that the method belongs to. We can use that variable anywhere inside a non-static method. So the this reference that belongs to the land method of the first airplane object points, well, to the first airplane object. And the same applies to the other methods. In our case, this means that the code that we have for our land method is equivalent to the following. So we can do public void land, and in the method body, we can type this.landed equals true. In our case, in our example, both versions of the method are the same, they're equivalent. We will see common use cases of the this reference in later videos. Cool, so let's recap what we covered in this video. We saw the difference between static and non-static members. We saw an example of static and non-static variables and also of static and non-static methods. And finally, we did an initial introduction to the this reference. And that's it for this video, guys. We hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching, everyone.